Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 67, Numbers, chapters 26 through 30. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. So we need to talk about who's on this episode today. Yeah, we have a we have a visitor. Yes. A guest. Our visitor is Philip Wells. I know all of our last names is Wells. That should tell you something. <laughs> Philip is our son, and he really was instrumental in putting the Skeptics Annotated Bible together. Yes, he was. And so he still is. He still is. So we have asked him to join us today to talk about this episode. So, Philip, welcome. Well, thanks for having me on. Very excited to be here. Um, so today we're doing four chapters, Steve. Five chapters. Oh, five. I can't count right now. So that tells me that when there are this many chapters. When we cover five chapters, it means there's some boring stuff. You that know. you've left up. Mm -hmm. You know, this one, we're making some progress, though. We're moving through numbers really quickly. So that's a good thing. Great. And tell me again how many chapters there are in numbers. I can't remember. Uh, All right, that's good. I, think, I it's think it's 36. 36, okay. Almost there, folks. Yep. All right, so we're going to start with chapter 26. Okay, verse 1. After the plague, God said to Moses and Eleazar, Count the male Israelites who are 20 years old and older, who are able to go to war, and who left the land of Egypt. All right, I have to stop you there. Uh huh. The plague we're talking about is the one where God got angry because people were having sex and a whoring. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and he so he killed twenty four thousand people. Uh huh. And those lovely two people. And it was stopped by Eleazar when he uh, when he killed those lovely two people. Phineas. Oh, you're right, Phineas. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I think one thing that's really kind of interesting here is that this is the second census. Remember the first one? Uh-huh. Right in the beginning of Numbers, they have a census. And how many people were there about? Oh, well, there was about 600. Ah, uh, 600,000. 600, and now how many? Oh, so we haven't actually said that yet. Yeah, the first time it was 603,550. Mm -hmm. And don't say that yet because we haven't actually said the grand total found of all the people who are 20 years old or older able to go to war and who left the land of Egypt was 601,730. Right. But I don't think when it said left the land of Egypt, that's what it really means. Because everyone who left the land of Egypt is now dead. Yes. Pretty much, except for Moses and God will take care of him later. Because I remember God saying, hey, Come, I'll lead you to the land of milk and honey, people. Mm -hmm. But then about a week later saying, none of you guys who are left the land of Egypt are going to make it to the land of milk and honey. Right. Throughout the whole 40 years, yep. the Israelites have been complaining. And when they do, God says, just let me go and I'm going to kill all the people. Yeah. And then Moses talks them out of it. Yeah. But the last time that Moses talked them out of it, God said, okay, I won't kill them now, but I'm going to kill them. They'll all die. They won't see the promised land. They won't see the land of Canaan. And yeah. so apparently God killed everyone who, all of those who left Egypt on this exodus are now dead. And there's now their descendants, their children, I guess. So, And six, these are the guys that are able to go to war. So 20 years old are the men. Yeah. So 600,000 people left Egypt and now they reproduced Mm -hmm. They went a whoring yeah. and reproduced, and now there are still 600,000 people. Yeah, that's right. Philip, what do you think of this story? Well, it, it does seem unlikely that they would be around the same amount of people. You know? I think so, too. Yeah. And we think it's maybe minus a couple thousand. It was 603,000 last time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And one thing I, I've left out, if you notice, we skip from... Verse 4 to verse 51. That's a lot of verses you left out. Yeah. And it's all just about the numbers uh, that are in each tribe. Okay. 
So they're saying this tribe descended from so and so. Yeah, there's twenty thousand and whatnot from this tribe, and forty thousand from this tribe. They they give them all to the exact amount, total them all up. It does actually equal the six hundred and one thousand seven hundred and thirty. So they did their math right. Twelve tribes we're talking about, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I skipped all that. I skipped all the details about the individual tribes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, Philip, you want to take it from there? Chapter 27. Okay, chapter 27, verse 1. Oh, yeah, that's a zinger. Look at that first name. Zelophehad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Zelophehad's five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hoglan, and Milka, and Tirza, stood in front of Moses, Eleazar, and the princes of the congregation, and said, Our father died, but he had no sons. Okay, I have to stop you there. First, I want to congratulate you for pronouncing all those names. Pretty darn close to what I would have done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so, Steve, who's Zalofa had? Yeah, that's a good question. He's, he's a guy. <laughs> good um, start. <laughs> he didn't have any sons, but he had five daughters. And I think he's from the tribe of Manasseh, but that's about all it says. Um, and so... So Zelophehad is dead now, I take it? Yeah, he, he died. I don't know whether he was one of the originals that left Egypt or not, but he is now dead. So the five daughters are are coming to Moses. Yeah, and saying, hey, we don't have any brothers. So what impact would that have had in those days if there were no men in a family? Well, then he wouldn't have anyone to inherit his land or any of his property. Or carry on the name. Or Carry on the name, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Philip, I'll let you go on now. Okay. Verse four. Why should his name die because he didn't have any sons? Those are smart women there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Moses brought their case to God. God said to Moses, the daughters of Zelophehad are right. Give them an inheritance from their father. Oh, man. God is being... Just and fair. Yeah, yeah, women's rights. I mean, <laughs> this is kind of the, the first thing in the Bible where you, where you can say, well, that's a good thing you know, with regard to women. Yeah. Yeah, God done good. Yeah. Okay. Say to the Israelites, if a man dies and has no son, his inheritance shall pass to his daughter. And I guess here there are five. Then we have a great picture, the daughters of Zelophehad. And is yeah. this Moses or up on the chair? I don't yes. know. I guess there's Moses and there's Eleazar. Uh-huh. And you can tell would... it's Moses because he has little horns. Oh, uh, well, he doesn't always. Oh, okay. <laughs> most, <laughs> most of the artists uh, at the time, you know, the ancient artists, uh -huh. uh, did represent him with horns. I, I would guess that's probably Moses in the chair and Eleazar, the priest, is sitting off to his left. With the cool hat. He's got a cool hat like you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it a miter? Yeah. Oh. Where's it different, though? Yes, it that? does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so chapter 12. God said to Moses, Climb Mount Abarim and see the land I have given to the Israelites. Okay, that's kind of a, a cruel thing to do, to have him go look at the land he's yeah. never going to get to. Yeah, he's already told him that he's not going to make it, right? Yeah, Moses is not going to make it to Canaan. And uh, Philip, do you remember why Moses isn't going to be able to go to the promised land? No, I don't. Well, it turns out that um, God is angry at him because the, the Israelites didn't have water. They started sort of thirsty. God told Moses to go talk to a rock. Talk to the rock. To make the water come out of the rock to give the Israelites water. So Moses went over to the rock, but instead of talking to the rock, he hit it with his rod twice. That special rod God gave him yeah. to do magic tricks with. And so because Moses struck the rock with the rod instead of talk to the rock like God asked, God was really angry with him. He's going to have to die here before and not make it to the promised land. That seems a little out of proportion with the crime. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe it was like he's going to strike up a conversation with the rock. He's knocking on the rock. 
Hello, Rock. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one. I still don't quite get it. I yeah. mean, God wanted him to do all these magic tricks with his rod before. And you'd think, well, this is kind of a cool little magic trick. Tap, tap, and water comes out of a rock. Yeah. No, nope, didn't work. So when you see it, you'll die. Like Aaron died. <laughs> okay, why is he telling him this? That's kind of it's more <laughs> cruel. Because you rebelled against my commandment at the water of Meribah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's exactly why. Moses said to God, let the God of the spirits of all flesh select a man to lead the congregation. So is he saying after you die? Yep. Okay. God said to Moses, make Joshua the leader of the Israelites. And Moses did as God commanded and made Joshua the leader. Um, Joshua, have we seen him before? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, he's kind of, uh, Moses's Lieutenant. He's the one he was one of the, one, I call him the dishonest spies. Oh, Remember? they came back saying, oh yeah, it'll be easy to yeah, take right. over that town. Yeah. yeah. Joshua, the dishonest spy is now going to lead the Israelites into Canaan. Right. But apparently he's quite the warrior. Okay. And we've got a whole book about him coming up, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Phil. Chapter 28. Okay, chapter 28 looks like it's uh, just animal sacrifices. Uh, daily, Sabbath, monthly, Passover, and first fruits. Uh-huh. Well, if you have been listening to the podcast, these are all covered in previous ones. Yeah, we have. We tried just to say it once, you know, when it goes through and talks about all the different kinds of sacrifices. And so we're going to leave them out here. Thank you, Steve. Uh-huh. And it looks like chapter 29 is as well. More animal yes. sacrifices on trumpet blowing and holy convocation days. <laughs> yeah. And what, what's yeah, a holy exactly. convocation day? I think it is like first fruits and Passover. Yeah, I think it's a big feast. Uh -huh. Yep. All right. Chapter 30. Moses spoke to heads of the Israelite tribes, saying, This is the thing God commands. If a man vows a vow to God, he must keep it. Well, that seems to stand reason. If you say <laughs> yeah. you're going to do something, do it. Uh-huh. Well, except for if it's something... We'll see later where some, some people make vows to God that they never should have made, and then they have to keep it. Oh. But I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. For no, later. don't. Okay. But if an unmarried woman vows a vow to God, and her father hears it, hears her vow, and does not object, then she must keep it. But if her father disapproves of it, her vow is invalid. So without a father saying... Yes, I heard it. You must keep it. I mean, a woman can't make a vow. Uh-huh, that's right. So she doesn't really... An unmarried woman has to have her father's approval to make a vow. Otherwise, it just doesn't have any effect. He sort of gets a veto power. Yeah. If he hears it. But if he doesn't hear it, if she makes a vow, like, in secret, what happens? Ah, well, I guess point. he can't object, can he? No, I don't know what the, I don't know how that would work out. So a woman really has no, not autonomy, what's the sovereignty? Like she can't do what she wants to do. Right. Yeah. I, th I think that this one is sort of taking away the first episode that we had about the five daughters was nice, you know, and was giving women some rights that yes. previously they didn't have apparently. Yeah. Which is so pretty the first, good. The first chapter today. Yeah, but now we're into something where women really can't make a vow because they're no. not really fully adult, I guess. You know, they have to do what their dad <laughs> says as long as they remain unmarried. Or their husband. Yeah. Philip, you want to take that one? Verse 6. If a married woman vows a vow to God and her husband hears her vow and does not object, then she must keep it. But if her husband disapproves of her vow... Her vow is invalid. So, yeah, women are beholding to either their father or their husband. Uh -huh. But we don't know if she does it in secret. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. 
Is God going to hear that secret vow? Because sometimes he has to have people tell him stuff because he doesn't really hear it. I think, for, I think from the spirit of this law, it wouldn't count. You got to ask your dad for permission or your husband. Okay. And the last line is every oath that a wife takes requires her husband's approval. There we go. If we were wondering. Yeah. 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 I guess that does kind of answer that question, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. So this is kind of some boringish stuff today. Yeah. But we've got some exciting stuff coming up. The oh, next one is quite good. a zinger. Okay. What's coming up in the next one? Well, I know we don't usually do previews. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> it involves the Midianites. Remember how God was upset at the Midianites in the last one, even though it was the daughters of Moab that. It was mostly the daughters of Moab that were a whore. It was all the daughters of Moab. Yeah, and we had that, that one, one Midianite woman uh -huh. who somehow was involved. Yeah. That upset God so much that he said, vex and smite the Midianites. Well, that's what's going to happen in the next episode. He's going to vex and smite the Midianites. Yeah. Men and women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you hate to spoil that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but folks, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. For our no, next it's, it's, it's going to be a good one next time. Great. <laughs> hey, Philip, thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure to come on again if invited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and listeners, we want to remind you that. The beautiful music you hear at the beginning and at the end of these episodes is from Martin Watkinson. We certainly appreciate that he lets us use it. All right. Join us next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.